students myself is puneet from prep kirpa classes our today's topic is conservation of plants and animals after going through the course you will be able to understand what is the importance of forests why should we protect wildlife and last but not the least how the extinction of some animal species is disrupting the earth's ecosystem in this course we will discuss the following number 1 what is the meaning of deforestation what are the causes of deforestation what are the effects of deforestation on wild animals environment villages cities earth and next generation number 2 why is it beneficial to conserve forest and wildlife how can we conserve forest and wildlife third what is the difference between flora and fauna fourth what is the difference between extinct species and endangered species fifth what is the meaning of endemic species sixth short notes on number 1 red data book number 2 migration of birds number 3 deforestation fourth wildlife sanctuary fifth biosphere reserve seventh why should we recycle paper plus 10 ncert or important questions plus much more what is the meaning of deforestation deforestation is the removal of a forest or stand of trees from land and using that land for other purposes on average 2400 trees are cut down each minute between 15 million to 18 million hectares of forest and area the size of bangladesh are destroyed every year the term most often relates to the clearing of trees by humans but natural reasons such as floods and forest fires can also bring down the trees now we will study the causes of deforestation the causes of deforestation are multiple some of them are man made and others are natural firstly we will study man made causes of deforestation number 1 agriculture is the main reason of deforestation globally growing global population and increased food consumption has led to many forest being converted into farms number 2 procuring land for mining construction of dam reservoirs transport and infrastructure projects third building houses and factories fourth making furniture paper or using wood as fuel Fifth, some corrupt government in employees are also involved in illegal cutting of trees for money. Now we will see what are the natural causes of deforestation. Number one, forest fires. Number two, severe droughts. Consequences of deforestation: We cut down more than 15 billion trees each year. as per estimates of the united nations food and agriculture organization over 1 billion acres of forest land has been converted for other uses such as mines cattle grazing and industries since 1990 the loss of trees causes harm not only to the environment itself but it also affects animals including humans let us study the consequences of deforestation number 1 loss of habitat and food of millions of animal and plant species this is the most devastating effect of deforestation about 70% of land animals and plant species live in forest and get their food and shelter from there so deforestation may lead to death or extinction of certain species of animals and plants due to very high temperature shortage of food and no shelter once a species becomes extinct it cannot be recovered this picture shows how the deforestation is adversely affecting the wild animals number 2 increase in droughts in deforested area less evaporation takes place resulting in the formation of pure rain clouds 
there is less water in the air to be returned to the soil. Subsequently, there is a decline in rainfall subjecting the area to drought. Water cycle gets interrupted leading to droughts. Third, increase in temperature and global warming. We know that plants and trees use carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Fewer trees would mean that less carbon dioxide will be used up which will result in increased amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This will lead to increase in the temperature of the earth and global warming as carbon dioxide traps the heat rays reflected by the earth. This picture shows that about 20% of global warming is caused by Deforestation. Fourth, desertification. Trees help the land to retain water and tops, that is, trees prevent soil erosion. Soil erosion means removal of the top layer of the soil, which is fertile. Fewer trees result in more soil erosion. The top layer of soil gets eroded by wind and water. So fertile lands will soon get converted into deserts. It is called desertification. This picture shows an area where there are no trees and it looks like a desert. Fifth, floods. Roots of trees help the soil to absorb water. Cutting of trees leads to less absorption of water in the soil. During heavy rains, the water will flow into rivers causing floods. Next, shortage of certain products. We get many products like fruit, honey, wood, medicines, etc. from trees and plants. We will face shortage of these products if we continue cutting trees. 7. Human wildlife conflict. As their habitat dwindles, Animals are forced to search for food and shelter outside their traditional forest range and move into areas populated by humans. Fatal encounters with wild animals like elephants, dangerous snakes and big cats occur in and around degraded forest areas. Conflict, conflict between humans and forest elephants is common, particularly in Asia. In Indonesia, a series of tiger attacks on illegal loggers made headlines in 2009. This picture shows how the deforestation is leading to human wildlife conflict. Next, emerging diseases. According to World Economic Forum, 31% of emerging diseases are linked to deforestation. According to a major study by American and Australian scientists, degradation of ecosystems increases the risk of new outbreaks. Examples of emerging diseases are rabies, Ebola virus disease, bat-associated viruses, etc. AIDS and malaria are also probably linked to deforestation. This table shows that the main cause of emerging diseases is linked with land use change, that is, deforestation. 9. Adverse effect on indigenous communities. Deforestation is also adversely affecting indigenous communities who depend on the resources provided by rainforest. Since we are part of a highly industrialized world, we will never truly understand how much deforestation has affected indigenous people and their ways of living. These two pictures depict the simple life of indigenous communities who are dependent on forest for their day-to-day -day requirements. Indigenous population means those communities that live within or are attached to geographically distinct traditional habitats or ancestral territories and generally maintain cultural and social identities and social, economic, cultural and political institutions 
separate from the mainstream or dominant society or culture. Are home to about 70% of the world's land based plant and animal species. But it is a matter of great concern that we are losing forest at an alarming rate. The most devastating effect of deforestation is loss of habitat and food of millions of animal and plant species. It is true that living things on earth can adapt to their surroundings, but it does not mean that this can happen overnight. Deforestation is occurring too quickly, which leads to the loss of many plants and animals. Wild forests such as the Amazon are beautiful and amazing places in which many different kinds of exotic plants and animals are found. According to World Economic Forum, 31% of emerging diseases are linked to deforestation. It is the need of the art to stop rampant deforestation to save our ecosystem and to prevent many species from becoming extinct. Why is it beneficial to conserve forests? The importance of forests cannot be underestimated. Forests are now being cleared twice as fast as they were 25 years ago. It is necessary to conserve forests because of following benefits. First benefit of forest is oxygen they provide. Trees are nature's recycling machines. They take carbon dioxide and release oxygen to support life on earth. Forests reduce air pollution. Forests filter the air and reduce pollution. They remove air pollutants like carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Third, food. Many people depend on foods found within forests such as fruits and nuts. Fourth, forests prevent soil erosion. Fifth, there is need to conserve forests to preserve biodiversity. Loss of forest poses a significant threat to biodiversity. Six, forests provide home and shelter to people. Millions of people still live in forests and in its vicinity. If these forests are destroyed, it would cause poverty to increase and create millions of refugees. Seven, medicinal value. A large percentage of drugs used for various diseases are extracted from plants and animals that live in forests. Many trees like Pacific yew and Moringa are known for medicine and therapeutic uses. These trees are mostly found in forests. Many indigenous people rely on forest plants to make their own herbal medicines that treat ailments such as cups, colds, asthma, pain relief, etc. Eight, forests provide home to nearly half of all species found on earth. Nine, create jobs. Lakhs of people are directly employed in forest management or conservation. Ten, they create natural beauty. Eleven, forests help in generating rainfall. Now, we will discuss some steps for conservation of forests. Number one, controlling forest fires. Latest fire fighting, latest fire fighting techniques should be adopted to conserve the forest in case of fire. Number two, more trees should be planted to increase the forest cover. Trees should be selected according to the geographical conditions of a particular region and proper care should be taken during the growth of trees. Third, we can protect forest from pests and diseases by spraying chemicals and antibiotics. Fourth, we should make proper utilization of forest products. Fifth, with the advent of industrialization, trees have been cut at an alarming rate for raw materials and various other purposes. This felling of trees can be regulated by selective cutting, clear cutting and shelter wood cutting. We should also understand the meaning of selective cutting, clear cutting and shelter wood cutting for better understanding of the concept.
Reflective cutting means the cutting out of trees that are mature or defective or of inferior kinds to encourage the growth of the remaining trees in the forest. Clear cutting is a forestry practice in which most or all trees in an area are uniformly cut down. Shelter wood cutting means that trees are removed in a series of cuts designed to achieve a new stand under the shelter of remaining trees. Why is it important to conserve wildlife? In the last 40 years, there have been an estimated loss of 10,000 wildlife species thanks to human activities like agriculture, expansion, poaching, etc. Although extinction has always been a part of nature's pattern, human beings are responsible for accelerating this extinction process by a factor of between 100 and 1000 times normal. Wildlife conservation is important due to following reasons. Number 1. Medicinal values. Wild plants and animals play an important role in fulfilling our pharmaceutical needs. For example, cobra venom is used as an important ingredient in making medications for nerve leprosy. It is necessary to conserve wildlife for the protection of biodiversity. Biodiversity is an important issue. Reduction in numbers of one animal species interrupts the ecosystem and the natural food chain and leads to threat to other species. For example, carnivore animals like loins, cheetahs and leopards depends on herbivores like antelopes for their survival. If antelopes become extinct in the jungle, that can be detrimental to the survival of the cats. Let us also understand the meaning of wildlife and wildlife conservation. As per Cambridge Dictionary, wildlife means animals and plants that grow independently of people, usually in natural conditions. Wildlife conservation is the practice of protecting plant and animal species and their habitats. Jobs. In places where there is zoo or wildlife sanctuary, it creates a lot of direct or indirect jobs for people. For example, people stay in nearby hotels, journalists make documentaries, people work in zoo or sanctuaries to take care of animals. Saving the nature for fun and mental well-being. Watching animals in their natural habitat is not only fun but also relaxing. People who spend most of their time outdoors whether watching wild animals, taking a walk or a ride in natural habitats are less likely to suffer from stress-related complications. Promotes tourism. Most of people visit a particular country over others is basically due to the country's flora and fauna as well as natural habitats such as forests, mountains and water bodies. These two pictures show how the protection of wildlife in their natural environment promotes tourism and provides jobs to the local people. Identification of new plant and animal species for research. A significant number of animals and plants are not yet discovered. Some researchers believe that medications for some of incurable diseases will most likely come from animals and plants that are yet to be discovered. Pollination. Nearly 90% of wild flowering plants need pollinators such as bees, insects, butterflies, and some birds to transfer pollen in between flowers. The pollination leads to fertilization. Pollination ensures that a plant will produce full body food and a full set of viable seeds. Foods and beverages produced with the help of pollinators include apple, chocolate, coffee, melons, vanilla, etc. In the first picture, process of pollination has been shown in a simple manner. 
by conserving wildlife we are ensuring that future generations can enjoy natural world and their incredible species that live within it the second picture shows to very beautiful animal if we do not conserve wildlife such like beautiful animals will become extinct microorganisms in wildlife take part in nitrogen fixation and increase the soil fertility causes of wildlife destruction cutting down of forest has led to the scarcity of food and space that has killed many animals increasing demand for hides and meat has led to the hunting of animals Frequent floods and earthquakes are the natural causes of wildlife destruction. Agricultural growth, timber extraction, mining, cattle breeding, oil extraction have also led to wildlife destruction. How can we conserve wildlife? Wildlife can be conserved by the endangered and vulnerable species can be kept in captivity in places such as zoos and bred to increase their population. The more number of national parks and sanctuaries should be established for preserving the natural habitats of wild animals and birds throughout the country. Stop unauthorized cutting of forest trees for timber and wood for fuel immediately because deforestation destroys the natural habitat of wild animals and birds. Move towards a plant-based diet. A lot of habitat destruction is from cutting down forest for agriculture. This is not only for cattle but also for the grains and soy to feed the animals that humans eat. Visit zoo and natural reserves. When you visit your local zoo and natural reserves, the entry fee and other parking charges you pay can go a long way in maintaining these protected areas. Donate to wildlife charities. The more money these charities receive, the more they can do to help conservation efforts around the world. By responsibly, by not purchasing products made from endangered animals for their parts, you can help in stopping wildlife trafficking, which has caused immense damage to the environment. Do not purchase items such as ivory under any circumstances. Some of the laws should be made to ban the killing or capturing of endangered animals or birds. It should be made a punishable, punishable offense. Such laws should be enforced strictly and should not remain on paper only. Breeding programs for endangered species should be organized. Be volunteer. Donate your time if you don't have money to give. Many organizations and zoos have volunteer programs. Are only big animals facing extinction? This is incorrect that only big animals like black, Rhinoceros, mountain gorilla, tiger, Asian elephant, etc. are facing extinction. Even small animals like insects, butterflies, birds, etc. are facing extinction. Most of the extinction is directly or indirectly caused by human activities such as hunting, deforestation and climate change, etc. Experts est estimate that the extinction rate of animal species today is between 100 and 1000 times higher than the natural extinction rate. It is important to take care of our natural world to ensure that these creatures do not disappear forever. These three pictures pertain to some small animals and insects who are on the verge of extinction. At times, we kill snakes, frogs, lizards, bats, and owls ruthlessly without realizing their importance in the ecosystem. By killing them, we are harming ourselves. They might be small in size, but their role in the ecosystem cannot be ignored. They form part of food chains and food webs. 
endangered species day is celebrated annually on the third Friday of May. This day is celebrated to educate the public about how important it is to protect endangered species and how we can eliminate the causes of extinction. Protected area. Protected areas are those areas that have been earmarked to protect our flora and fauna and their habitat. Examples of protected areas are wildlife sanctuaries, national parks and biosphere reserves, plantation, cultivation, grazing, cutting of trees, hunting and poaching are prohibited there. There are approximately 2 lakhs protected areas in the world which cover around 14.6% 14 of the world land and 2.8% of the oceans. This table shows the number of protected areas of India as on December 2021. Biosphere Reserve Biosphere reserves are the areas meant for conservation of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of plants, animals and microorganisms generally found in an area. The biosphere reserves also help to maintain the culture of that area. The Indian government has established 18 biosphere reserves. The biosphere reserves may also contain other protected areas in it. The Panchmari Biosphere Reserve consists of Sakura National Park and two wildlife sanctuaries named Bori and Panchmari. Protection, protection is granted not only to the flora and fauna, the protected region, but also to the human communities who inhabit these regions and their ways of life. We will now understand the difference between flora and fauna. The word flora means plant life. Flora is all the plant life present in a particular region or time. Sometimes bacteria and fungi are also referred to as flora. The plants found in a particular area are termed as flora of that area. The flora or plants are so important for us that we can even think about living without them. Plants support life both on the land and in the oceans. Plants produce oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. Besides, trees and herbs provide essential resources for humans as well as animals. Hence, the importance of flora is beyond doubt. Fauna is all of the animal life present in a particular region or time. The animals found in a particular area are termed fauna of that area, possessing a tremendous diversity of climate and physical conditions. India has great variety of fauna, numbering 89,451 species. Every single plant and animal offers something to this world. This brings a balance of life known as flora and fauna ecosystem. It is a pity that human quest for money and power has created a world in which the ecological balance of flora and fauna is being gradually destroyed. Let us understand the meaning of endemic species. Endemic species are those species of plants and animals which are found exclusively in a particular area. They are not naturally found anywhere else. A particular type of animal or plant may be endemic to a zone, a state or a country. Endemic species might more easily become endangered or extinct because they are already restricted in distribution. The destruction of their habitat and increasing population and introduction of new species may affect the natural habitat of endemic species and endanger their existence. These four pictures show the examples of some animals, birds and plants who fall in the category of endemic species. 
Now we will understand what is meant by wildlife sanctuary. Wildlife sanctuary is an area where animals and plants are well protected from external disturbances. The capturing, killing and poaching of animals is strictly prohibited and punishable by law in all such places. The goal of wildlife sanctuary is to give comfortable environment for the animals living in the area. People living in wildlife sanctuaries are allowed to do certain activities such as grazing by their livestock, collecting medicinal plants, firewood, etc. Some of the threatened wild animals like black buck, white-eyed buck, elephant, golden cat, pink-headed duck, gharial, martial crocodile, rhinoceros, etc. are protected and preserved in wildlife sanctuaries of India. The total number of wildlife sanctuaries in India is 551. National Park National parks are the areas that are set by the government to conserve the natural environment. In a national park, the landscapes and its flora and fauna are present in their natural state. The national parks provide habitat to a large number of wild animals because of the optimum environmental conditions with proper upbringing and breeding facilities. In order to protect plants and animals, strict rules are imposed in all na national parks. Human activities such as grazing, poaching, hunting, capturing of animals or collection of firewood, medicinal plants, etc. are not allowed. There are more than 100 national parks in India. National parks in India are International Union of Conservation of Nature Category 2 Protected Areas. The Kaziranga National Park in Assam is extremely famous for its rhinos. Endangered species is an important term used when we talk about conservation of plants and animals. So let us understand the meaning of endangered species. Endangered species are those animals or plants that are at risk of becoming extinct. Every single day on the planet, dozens of species are disappearing. There are thousands of animals facing extinction today, from blue whales to elephants, most of the world's most massive species are facing extinction. These animals are most threatened by human activities such as hunting, deforestation, and climate change. When the conservation status of a species reaches endangered, it is likely this species could disappear forever. Whether the extinction and reduction of some animal species disrupt the Earth's ecosystem. Every time we lose a species, or we are losing something unique and valuable. When a species is lost, it becomes more difficult for other species to remain healthy and stable. Species are interconnected to each other in intricate webs of relationships and removing one species from the web can affect the whole system. The extinction and reduction of some animal species very much disrupt the Earth's ecosystem. Its negative effects are being felt both on land and in the ocean. Some animals can serve as buffers between pathogens and humans. Thus, if species become extinct, this buffer is lost and humans can be more likely hit by diseases. We can understand the negative effects of extinction of some animal species with the help of some examples. When foxes go extinct or reduce in number, mouse overpopulation is unavoidable due to decreased predation. Consequently, this increases the issue of diseases like E. coli or bubonic plague to other species, which is certainly not good for environment. When lions and leopards decreased in Africa, it led to a surge of olive baboons, which sadly transferred intestinal parasites to humans. 
closing species like bees would be extremely harmful to the crop yield of farmers and could also cause global famine. What is meant by Fed Data Book? International Union for Conservation of Nature is an international organization which is working in the field of nature conservation and sustainable use of natural resources. This organization is best known for compiling and publishing of IUC and Red List or Red Data Book. Red Data Book is a book or public document that lists the endangered animals and plants. This book is mainly created to identify and protect those species which are on the verge of extinction. India also maintains Red Data Book for plants and animals found in India. Red Data Book is used by national and international government agencies wildlife department, conservation-related NGOs, educational organizations, zoos, students, media, etc. Red Data Book provides detailed information for studies and researches. It helps in monitoring programs on rare and endangered species. With it, countries can take the right step towards the conservation of plants and animals that are on the verge of extinction. In the Red Data Book, the word red signifies the danger that the animals and plant species presently experience across the globe. Now, we will understand the meaning of term migration of birds. Migration is the regular seasonal movement undertaken by many species of birds. Birds migrate in response to changes in food availability, habitat, or weather. Approximately 1800s of the world, 10,000 bird species are long-distance migrants. Bird migration is not limited to birds that can fly. Most species of penguin migrate by swimming. Birds who cover long distances to reach another land are known as migratory birds. Most birds migrate at night. They have been doing this for an indefinite and long period of time as a night sky typically means calmer airspace and fewer predators. During migration, the birds have to fly a very long distance which may mean crossing many countries. Migratory birds navigate using celestial cues from the sun and stars, the earth's magnetic field, and mental maps. Only a small number of birds are actually threatened by natural events. Migratory birds the world over are threatened by illegal hunting and collision with man-made objects such as glass, covered buildings, and power lines. They are dependent on finding suitable breeding and watering grounds as well as stopover sites along their flyways where they can rest and feed. The loss of any of these sites used by the birds during their annual cycle could have a great impact on the birds' chances of survival. World Migratory Bird Day is a global celebration which is aimed at spreading awareness for the need to conserve migratory birds in their habitats. World Migratory Bird Day is celebrated on two peak days each year, second Saturday in May and in October in recognition of the cyclical nature of bird migration and the different peak times of migration along the world flyways. Next, why should we recycle paper? Paper manufacturing is one of the causes of deforestation. It takes 17 full green grown trees to make one ton of paper. Therefore, we should save paper as well as recycle paper. The recycling of paper is the process by which waste paper is turned into 
new paper products paper can be recycled five or seven times for use recycling one ton of newsprint saves about one ton of wood while recycling one ton of printing or copier paper saves slightly more than two tons of wood if each student saves at least one sheet of paper in a day we can save many trees in a year we should save reuse use paper and recycle it by this we not only save the trees but also save energy and water needed for manufacturing paper moreover the amount of harmful harmful chemicals used in paper making will also be reduced deforestation the answer to deforestation is deforestation a large number of forests have destroyed due to various reasons such as forest fires agriculture needs human needs mining etc deforestation means regenerating or replanting forest areas that have been destroyed or damaged deforestation is not just a question of planting trees here and there randomly we should generally plant trees of the same species which were found in that forest we should plant at least as many trees as we cut deforestation can take place naturally also if the deforested area is left undisturbed it reestablishes itself in natural deforestation there is no role of human beings we have already caused tremendous damage to our forests if we have to retain our green wealth for future generations plantation of more trees is the only option deforestation is expensive and takes time it is rarely possible to quickly reforest large areas at once and proper planning is needed to identify priority areas many organizations and government in different countries are working towards the protection and restoration of forests what will happen if all the forests are destroyed if all the forests are destroyed the following changes will occur the amount of carbon dioxide in the air will increase which will result into increase in the temperature of the earth life on earth will become impossible if all the forests are destroyed it will have a severe impact on the environmental balance there will be frequent droughts and floods in the absence of trees and plants the animals will not get food and shelter we will not get valuable forest products the tribal people may also lose their livelihood we care wildlife sanctuary national park and biosphere reserve are names given to the areas meant for conservation and preservation of forest and wild animals biodiversity refers to the variety of living organisms in a specific area plants and animals of a particular area are known as the flora and fauna of that area endemic species are those species of plants and animals which are found exclusively in a particular area birds migrate to improve their chances of survival and reproductive success food is one of the primary reasons for bird migration some complete their migratory routes in a very short time particularly certain aquatic species and others will make a more leisurely trip often stopping along the way to feed many of the smaller species migrate at night and others migrate primarily in the daytime we should save reuse and recycle paper to save trees energy and water deforestation is the restocking of destroyed forest by planting new trees 
An ecosystem is made of all the plants, animals, and microorganisms in an area, along with no living components such as climate, soil, river deltas, etc. Endangered species are those species of animals or plants that are at risk of becoming extinct. Red data book contains a record of endangered species. There is need to take immediate steps to control the forest fires if it happens. Care and habitation need to be provided to the species who are on the verge of extinction. We must remember that each plant and animal has its own role to play in the ecosystem. All the species of plants and animals form part of food chains and food webs. If we go on cutting trees and most of the world's animals and plants are threatened with extinction, the day is not far when human race would also be in great danger. If you like our video, please like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you.